Hello, and welcome to the eighth episode of the Ninja Podcast. Everything that you need for ninja and more. In today's episode, we'll be interviewing Max Feinberg and Caden Lapsack. This episode is sponsored by our gold sponsors, Vertex Labs Academy, a STEM and Ninja Warrior facility located in Alexandria, Virginia, Salty Ninja Memes, an Instagram account ran by an anonymous user that chronicles ninja memes, The Art of Ninjas, a graphic design page that creates designs for one or many ninjas for a set price, Meditare LLC, a salon playing the Open of Virginia in 2023, designed to cover services extending to the skin, hair, nails, and Reiki, Slap Chalks, a company created by a 15 competitor Joseph Ruse that produces easily washable shorts with a chalk pocket, and Ninja Garden, a Polish-based company that specializes in building ninja holds. All right, so for our next interview, uh, I'm here with Max Feinberg and Caden Lepsack. Both of them made it to stage three last season, and Caden has been the last man standing for the past two seasons of American Ninja Warrior. Hey, guys, how are you? Hi, good to be here. Uh, I'm Max. Hi, I'm Caden. So uh, there's your name intro for those of you who don't know which one's which. Uh, So to start us off, um, this is like a... Dual question for both of you. Uh, where did the Amaxing slash Super K nicknames come from? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, Amaxing kind of came from my first season on Junior. They were kind of like they let us know that, hey, like you can't wear like any brand shirts. So we're going to need you to come up with either your own logo or find a plain shirt. And finding some plain shirt was really impossible. Like, it was just an impossible assignment. So we, I decided to make my own logo with like a maxing and like my dad helped and some guys from his company kind of helped to make the logo. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of where that came from. We wanted like a little superhero name for junior. How about you, Caden? Yeah, mine came from my wakeboarding coach. We were actually in my garage because uh, I just started in just so had a few obstacles there. And he was like, we need a nickname for you. So he just came up with Super K. My nickname came from basically myself. I just like racing and, and I like ninjas. So that's pretty much it. That's cool. I nice. like it. Yeah, it's it's simple. Most, most of these nicknames are simple, except for like, like one of the guys that I know that follows me. Uh, this is a sa- shout out to Cedric Holcomb. His name is the Frizzy Coif Ninja. I'm not making that up. Some of these oh. nicknames are incredibly confusing. Yeah, I'd like to hear the story behind that one if I get a chance to talk to him. Yeah. Uh, my next question is uh, for Caden. Uh, where did the reason to start Ninja Intensity come from? Like, what was your motivation behind making it? Yeah, the motivation was uh, I was driving up about two hours, an hour and a half to a ninja gym. And we met my coach, John, there, who was also driving up two hours, and we were living in the same part of the city. So we just kind of decided to make a gym closer because we knew it would be a hit. Did you ever, like, get the feeling at any point that maybe, like, it might not, like... Was there any? Was there ever any, like, financial struggles to, like, get the gym to work, or did it always seem to, like fit nicely i guess yeah i mean i feel like anyone starting a business is gonna have those types of struggles but you know you work through it and luckily we got through it and i think we're going pretty well would you say that uh ninja intensity right now is like thriving and is like one of the best ninja gyms to go to i mean i definitely think we're thriving locally but there's a lot of great ninja gyms out there i don't know if it would be the best well, it's pretty close, in my opinion. I haven't been to Ninja Intensity. Hoping to come out there, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're welcome anytime. anytime. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's just going to cost me like $500 or something to get a plane ticket to Colorado. I mean, it's far, but it'd probably be worth it. Uh, so my next question is actually for Max. Uh, do you plan to collaborate with Stronghold more to design some more obstacles? Yeah, I mean, I'm really close with the Stronghold guys. I've been uh, talking to them a lot. I don't know. The X was super cool, and that turned out to be a way bigger hit than I thought it was going to be. And that was that was really cool. Uh, and I'd love to, you know, collaborate with them again in the future. 
Um, maybe get some obstacles made out of metal instead of wood. So it doesn't break as easily, but you know, I do like the falling X and I'd, I'd love to do something in the future, maybe for an upcoming bucket of chalk competition. In terms of like what your like dream sort of hold would be like, what well, what would you envision behind it? Like other than the falling X? Yeah. I mean, I think the falling X is really close to it because I really like the falling shelf obstacle from the show. That's kind of one of my favorites. And so I knew I wanted to design my hold kind of around that. And so my dream hold, I don't know, I'd want it to be like the Swiss army knife of ninja holds where there's so much you could do with it and so many options. But give me some time to think about that. Right. It's like a multi-use hold that you can yeah, use in any exactly. sort of way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that makes or that makes some more sense. It's like kind of like what MakerCraft and DGS are doing. Like, yeah, they're with like they're, the de- with like the Devil Step stuff. It's like you've got multiple uses in one obstacle, and it's like it's interchangeable, which is like the best part of those obstacles. Yeah, the interchangeability and just like you know, you're not just buying one obstacle; like you're buying way more, which makes it a lot more affordable for gyms and backyard courses. And yeah, that's kind of my goal for making holds. Yeah, it's like it's it's like a lot more bang for your buck that you're getting there specifically. Exactly. Because like, exactly. yeah. Uh, Caden, do you have you thought about making a custom hold of your own? Yeah, I've thought about it quite a bit. Uh, Max's X is so cool; it's very different from a lot of holds. So I'd want to think about it and actually make one that I'm pretty proud of. I've talked with Stronghold a little bit about it, but. We haven't came up with anything yet. I think we're going to see the falling K in a couple weeks. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused to see how that would work. <laughs> it's basically just half an X. <laughs> hmm. What yeah, if you yeah. used it as... What if you used it as, like, um... I remember this obstacle was, like, in stage three. can't remember the name. But it was, like, a cylinder with, like, spokes on it. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. Ru- the roulette cylinder like wh- what line. if you did that but with uh with half of it like the super k hold that would be different for sure I-, I don't know how hard it would be i'd have to see it in competition first but that sounds like a pretty interesting idea yeah uh so to move on to my next question uh which one of you would you say is the better ninja absolutely max no, I, I see. I don't. I don't agree. Based on you know the last five years of competing with this guy, uh, but ninja's always hard to define. Like someone truly being better than someone else, just because of how versatile and uh, agile the sport is. It's always changing. But I see the amount of effort and training that Caden puts in on a daily basis. Like he has so much going on in his life, but he always finds time to get in the gym, to put in the work, and that's always super cool to see. Aww. Aww. Uh, I don't really have a lot going on. It's pretty much just training. Just ninja, yeah. And ninja's his that's, life. That's pretty what much. makes Caden one of the best ninjas, is that his whole life is dedicated 100% to ninja. And that's super cool to see, and super cool to see his training all pay off in the, in the big picture, especially with the show and these big competitions. He just kills it. Right. Would you say that, like, his motivation is, like, the thing that you think drives him to be better? Yeah, I think he's definitely the most motivated person I've ever met. Like, I've asked him if he wants to go hang out or play games or something instead of training, and the answer is always no. Like, it's for him, it's always in the gym, always working to get stronger and be better. Well, you could do, like, one-arm pull-ups while playing Super Smash Bros. That's an option. Oh, I do love Super Smash Bros. <laughs> yeah, c- combine two combine two sides of what you both like. Easy yeah, win. Absolutely. Yeah, he likes one arm pull-ups more than I do though. <laughs> well, what's your record at one arm pull-ups, Max? I like a nice four. <laughs> I still haven't gotten one. Oh, right. you'll get there. You'll get there, dude. Yeah, it it's hard though. Like Oh, definitely. For people, for people that just like watch reels and be like, "Oh, I can do that. I can do that easily with like no training or no effort." It's like, dude, if you saw half of what like everybody goes through to get better, 
at this, it's like it takes so much work. Yeah, like uh, once you like you're looking at reels, and once you actually try it, it definitely changes your outlook a lot. Yeah, absolutely, Caden. Right, it's like get it's like getting that actual viewpoint makes you feel like if you're a ninja and like you see people out there messaging, oh, that's easy, I could do that. That's just them sort of being ignorant, I guess, which isn't really a bad thing. It's just that they're not like seeing the depths to which these athletes train. And yeah. I mean, like even even like the mid tier like skilled ninjas, like everybody trains a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, just kind of going back to the like the people just scrolling through reels and seeing ninja stuff. I love the way that you know, like all these social media outlets are spreading ninja. So even if someone doesn't entirely understand like the difficulty of some of these things, I love that ninja is always growing through these platforms and, you know, it's kind of reaching out to more people than it ever has before. Right. So even if they're not like properly understanding it, just the fact that we even have more people looking at it is a good thing in and of itself. Yeah. That's kind of what I mean. Caden been posting reels so much lately. Like we've seen the success that other ninjas have had in, you know, getting reels that, you know, go viral and just do really well and target so many people. And I've seen so many people walk into Ninja Intensity for the first time, like, hey, I saw that on Facebook the other day, or I saw that on Instagram. And it's just kind of cool that, like, because I wish when I, before I started Ninja, I found it a lot sooner in my life. And, you know, it's super cool to see people in their lives that are discovering it at an early age and, you know, step into the gym to try it right I, I would definitely agree with that like one of the most helpful things about ninja on social media is even if people aren't getting like the right viewpoint of how hard it is to actively train and actively get better it's like you're still it, it's still being helpful by getting more people into the sport so i think it's got some negatives but it also it also has a lot of positives i think that has helped the ninja community grow a lot in the past couple of years Definitely. And it's like sort of helps, I guess, stimmy some of the ratings fallings that the show has been having recently. Because it's like the show's fallen like, I think, three or four million from like a couple years ago. So it's like even then, Ninja Warrior is still in like the public eye. It's just the show doesn't command as big of a hemisphere as, as it used to, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so getting into my next question, um, this is one that you guys can answer one at a time. Who would each of you say was your ninja mentor at each stage in ninja for you? So kind of when I started ninja, the one guy that was always there was Najee Richardson. I always wore his shirt when I competed and it was just because my parents saw how into the show I was getting and they went online to look for ninja shirts and I found Najee's shirt. I was like, you know what? I, the Phoenix is pretty dang cool. And so I wore it. And, you know, through that, I got really close to Naj. And, you know, we became pretty good friends. And he helped me get to where I am today. And then from there, like, it's just everybody that's given me advice, given me the confidence to know that, like, I can be the ninja that I want to be and not just, like, someone that sits on the couch and watches and thinks I can do that. But, you know, someone that actually gets out there and works for it. Someone that actually has like the desire to push for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. What about you? Um, yeah. I so for, for those of you who don't know who are watching this podcast, um, Max actually used to train at Nova Ninja, the same gym that I train at now. Uh, Max, just generally, like, what did that gym specifically mean to you in terms of, like, how it helped you? Yeah, I mean, Nova Ninjas was my first ninja gym that I ever stepped foot in, and, you know, right off the bat, I kind of discovered that, like, I, it really helped me realize that I loved ninja, and I loved doing obstacles, I loved building obstacles, and, you know, it was so close to home for me that I could get in there five, six times a week train um and coach others and so just having that really built up my confidence built up my strengths and you know it's always going to be a part of my ninja journey 
Right, I'd agree. Uh, Caden, would you say that Ninja Intensity was the same for you, or was there like a gym beforehand that represented that for you? Yeah, absolutely. Ninja Intensity has definitely been a huge part of my life, and it's definitely changed me for the better. That's that's honestly wonderful, man. Um, so to get into my next question, um, how would you say your got? How would you guys say that your lives have changed since appearing on AEW, as well as just starting competing and getting in to Ninja itself? Well, I mean, AEW has been amazing. It's been such a big part of our lives, uh, especially the last couple of years. You know, I think I've been watching this show for eight, nine years. And it's always been a dream of mine. So being able to live out that dream was not only so rewarding within itself, but it's given both of us so much confidence that, you know, like we can do anything that we set our minds to that we've dreamt of for years. And the show has really just been a great opportunity for us both. Would you say that uh, Ninja got you into the show or that the show got you into Ninja? The show got me into Ninja for sure. Yeah, I, I'd agree in that regard. Like, I've been watching Ninja myself for... When did the show start? Like, 2009? 2008, I've been watching... I think it was when A&W picked up. Uh, let me check. 2009, so I've been watching it since season one. Man, I feel like an OG now. I was talking to one of my friends yesterday um or rather a couple days ago i can't remember who it was and i think they said that they started watching around season five actually no i think it was matt matt bradley um i think in my interview with him i asked him when he started watching the show and i think he said season five but it's like season one is like the absolute og and then season five is like You've still been there for a while. Uh, yeah, season, Kaden. Oh. Yeah, season five, that, that's a decade ago. Like That's pretty cool. And it's cool to see so many ninjas like Matt, especially, that, you know, are now adults. But they've been doing this for so long, and it's been taking over almost half their lives. And that's pretty cool to just see. Right. Like, if, if you think about it from reference, like, most of – us ninjas like started training at like seven or eight years old. And now we're like 16, 17, 18, 19. I mean, I got into the show around like, like four or five years old. I didn't start training until like 2019. And then like, I actively got into it like a year and a half ago. But like, e even then, like I haven't trained for super long, but like, I can completely understand, like, why people love Ninja and why I love Ninja. Like, I I grasp, like, the desire behind it. And it's like, you just love it. And I, I don't really think that it matters for what reason you like Ninja. Like, it might be because you like a certain type of obstacle, or it might be because you like to, like, fly through the air. But, like, everybody in this community is, like bonded by one thing and that's we share a love of being on these obstacles and i think that that's a great thing absolutely dude uh so my next question is for max um has college impeded your ability to train at all and do you think your competition performance has gone down at all because of it you know i actually think that ninja no, i'm just kidding i don't know i saw your questions earlier and you know we were kind of joking that Ninja has impeded my learning, but no, that's a joke. Uh, no, I've picked um, to go to school out here because of Caden, because of Ninja Intensity. Uh, and I think that in that regard, it's really helped me. And I think I'm physically stronger than ever uh, doing a ton of training out here, which has been great. But, you know, the last competition season was a little rough yet. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why, <laughs> um, but, you know, I don't think it's affected my competition negatively moving to school out here, but we're just still working on getting back into the rhythm that I had in the past and just trying to get that back. Just trying to get the mojo back almost like, yeah, the consistency, yeah, I think yeah, is the, the flow. biggest thing. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Caden, what about you? You're you're a sophomore, right? You, no, Caden, you're a senior. Yeah, I'm a senior. <laughs> there you go. Wait, really? Huh. I did not realize that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So generally, with just like the fact that you're preparing for college yourself, how how would you say that you feel about that yourself? Yeah, I'm definitely looking into all of my options, trying to figure that stuff out. Yeah, I definitely want to stay local because Intensity has been like my home for the past uh, however long it's been open. You think you're going to go to the University of Denver like uh, Max is? Probably not. I got to stay as far away from Max during the week as possible. Yeah, I think Gaten's starting to get pretty sick of me by now. Yeah, he's... You're you're gonna get him into trouble, Kaden. Yeah. yeah. Or rather, you're just gonna get each other into trouble. Like it doesn't matter who it is. Oh uh, yeah, we we get into trouble quite a bit. Uh, we're always the goofballs of the group. I don't know. I try to be the class clown and make Kaden laugh when he tries to take ninja or something too seriously. And so I just like to, you know, lighten the mood, and that usually doesn't work out well for us. <laughs> So he's more so the serious guy, and you're like the goofball? I am definitely the goofball. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, my next question is for Caden. Uh, do you feel you could get more than 20 one-arm pull-ups? <laughs> um, that's a good question. You know, I, it's been a, I never really trained one-arms that often. Uh, the one where I got 15, that was basically just John, like, deciding that we should max out one arm pull-ups today so maybe if i train for it i could but one arm pull-ups are really hard and they get really tiring to train yeah that makes sense like it, it's extremely tough to even do one so like to even think about doing 20 absolutely absolutely it's it's a tough tough movement for sure uh so uh so my next question is for both of you uh and this is just gonna give a preview for everybody um what's next for bucket of chalk four you guys willing to give any uh hints or spoilers out yet yeah i think we are gonna go for the movie themes again it was just so much fun decorating all the obstacles and theming them it and they all looked so good that I think we wanted to do it again. And, yeah, I mean, just playing the theme comp, so we're definitely going to bring that back. Uh, I'm really excited for that. Yeah, I think October 7th and 8th this year is the date we have lined up. So, yeah, it should be fun. You guys ever planning to host uh, an East Coast competition or not? Um, You know, it's really easy to plan a comp at Intensity because I live – Seven minutes away from the gym, Max now lives pretty close. Yeah. So we can just go in there, test some obstacles, and then take everything down so people don't see them, which would be a lot harder on the East Coast. For sure. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it's like, it makes sense to do it, like, in your own gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So it's, like, right there for you. So it's, like, you have that option every time. Yeah, we also don't want to, like, impede on someone else's gym and, like, kind of just show up and do things our own way in someone else's gym. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I kind of want a bucket competition in, like, Virginia or D.C. I don't know. I, I want to be able to go to one of these bucket competitions without having to spend on plane tickets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but at the same time, it's worth it. Y'all put on amazing competitions. Thank I, you. Yeah, we appreciate it. We, you know, we love doing this every year. We love you know, growing the competitions, but also learning from our mistakes in the past and just trying to put on some of the best comps in the sport. That's kind of our goal. Would you say that it's like the best non-league competition out there? Um, You know, there's so many that do three, four stage comps at this point that it's hard to judge. And we're also terrible measures for that because we're the ones running the comps. So we're a little bit biased, but... You know, I, um, I don't know that it's our goal to be one of the best competitions out there. And so I don't want to say that 
we're the best or some of the best because we always want someone something to work towards and that'll always be our goal right and it's and it's like the business aspect of wanting to put on the best competition is also wanting to like compete at your best in the competitions that like you're not running definitely yeah um my next question is and this is for Caden uh do you think that the three peat is doable by that I mean getting um last man standing three times in a row <laughs> um I mean you never know ninja is so particular because you could you could do great one season and fall in the first obstacle the next so you never know I'm gonna go out there and do my best and Hopefully my best is that, but you never know. Do you think that, like, if you had to offer up, like, a prediction for your season, do you think that you can win the entire thing? Um, I mean, that would definitely be the, the ending goal, but I don't know. I like to just go out there and do my best, and hopefully I'm happy with my best. Yeah, that makes sense. Um... My question, my next question is uh, for Max, and it's also like a sort of prediction question, and it's about um, do you think you could get to stage four of the season? Like, do you see that being potential for you? Yeah, I absolutely think that you know I have the potential to make it to stage four. Uh, going into last season, I definitely did not think I was going to make it to stage three, and I did, and I was like, oh crap! Like you know, stage four the the grand prize is within my reach. And that was a super cool feeling, but you know, my goal is just to inspire as many people along the way and just be that role model and the person that a lot of people look up to. And so if that's making it to stage four, then, you know, that that's my goal, but you know, I just want to go out there, have fun, do my best and just be an inspiration. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that that's a really good uh, goal to aspire for. Um, so my next question, and this is the final question. This is for both of you. Um, how is promoting breast care awareness through, um, not just a show, but also through the bucket competitions? How has it helped aid the cause as well as, uh, helped both of your moms? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the biggest thing for us and our families is raising awareness. Uh, I run with the ribbon on the back of my shirt and the bucket of chalk, um, has pink shirts with, raising awareness in the phrase one in eight is not okay. And while we're donating money to these important charities, it's also important that, you know, we raise this awareness and we bring attention to this cause because until three, four years ago, like our families, it wasn't, you know, a priority for us. And that's kind of a most families are, but you know, it is this really big prevalent issue that just hit us like a train, like out of nowhere. And so we just want, you know, other families to be aware. We want them to, you know, not feel like they're ever alone in this and just, you know, be the light at the end of the tunnel for a lot of families. Right. Like making sure that they have the awareness that, hey, this is something that happens to like, not just to you, but other people as well. Yeah. Was it tough for both of your moms when they had to go through that? Like initially? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's definitely a big, big thing to go through and it's scary. It's definitely scary. And like, especially when it comes out of nowhere, like it did for us. And so by raising awareness by, you know, our parents doing what they're doing, it's, you know, just kind of not have, not letting other uh, families go through what we went through we just want them to be you know as on top of it as they physically can be and hopefully that you know limits the worst case scenarios right like not having other families have to go through what you did like not having them have to relive the sort of trauma that you guys went through yeah yeah that makes sense i mean me personally like you you two guys are like the only ones that i know that have people close to them with breast cancer, but I completely understand like why we should be paying attention to it. Cause it's like, it's like serious. It's super serious. It's like, 
there's a good chance that like somebody with breast cancer could pass away. And it's like, I think that it's great that you guys are trying to bring more attention to like what I consider to be a very prevalent issue. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's all I've got guys. Thank you so much for coming out. Thanks for having us. I mean, you know, it's definitely super cool to be, you know, on this end of it because, you know, three years ago, I was the one like running podcasts and, you know, it, that's a ton of fun and that's a great opportunity. And I'm just thrilled that, you know, me and Kate got this opportunity and thankful for you for doing this. Yeah, of course, man. Before the end of this episode, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our sponsors, not just our gold sponsors, but also our silver and bronze. We'll be starting from gold and then go working our way down. So in order, I'd like to thank Vertex Labs Academy, Salty Ninja Memes, The Art of Ninjas, Meditari LLC, Slap Chalks, Ninja Garden. Those are all our gold sponsors. And then for our silver sponsors, we have Squire Squad, Ninja Warrior vs. Battle of the Ninjas, World Ninja Sport, Jump Climb Extreme, Obstacle Athletics, The Racing Association, Everybody Loves Racing, Memes for Ninja, A&W Discord, It's Us Sarah's Beehive, Vladimir Backyard Builds, Ninja23, and Shinobi Fitness. Thank you to all these amazing companies slash businesses for being willing to sponsor us, and we hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Ninja Podcast. Every ever need for Ninja and more.